was in Cleveland, I met with Barbara Anderson, and we walked down this street together. Today it has even more empty blocks and crumbling homes. But, like Stephanie, Barbara is staying put. When I was last here in 2007, you said, I think we're halfway through the storm. Yes. Was that too optimistic, do you think? That was way too optimistic. Way too optimistic. Because even now we're not halfway through the really? storm. <laughs> the more people have moved away. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're going to continue to move away. What about your house? You're, you owe more on your house than it's worth. Why do you walk away too? Why do you keep paying the mortgage? Financially, it's uh, it can be considered a burden. But emotionally, it is an uplift and it is a pleasure. I raised eight kids here. Uh, they were raised well. They are doing well. And uh, I found my love here. But plenty who can leave Cleveland's east side or quit the city have chosen to join the exodus. We lost 18% of our population between 2000 and 2010. But what I think is even more tragic is that hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of homeowners in Cleveland had their single most valuable asset stripped of almost all its value. It's estimated in this country that the minority communities, African American and Hispanic, uh, have taken a $1.2 trillion hit between 2000 and 2010 to their net worth. That is a huge amount of money. Sure. And how are they coping with that? What's, it's, what's it's, the up, what's the well, wash up of that? As best they can. I mean, what can they do? Cleveland City of Light, City of Magic. Cleveland City of Light, you're calling me. So, how did it happen to a city with such a glorious history? A city with its own Federal Reserve Bank, a world famous symphony orchestra, and some of the best museums in America or even the world. A city that in some parts is also prospering, and that offers good new jobs to those with skills and education. Well, it's about change, and about the people America is leaving behind. Cleveland, city of light, city of magic. It's also about whites fleeing to the suburbs, and fear of crime. But what really killed this community is reckless and fraudulent lending by America's big banks. Even now I can remember. Back in the early 2000s, the banks and mortgage companies were so desperate to lend money, they were pushing it out the door to anyone who had a pulse. No job, not a problem. No income, who cares? And bad credit score, well, that didn't matter either. And to make sure that no one missed out, they were even prepared to fiddle the paperwork, which is why they were collectively known as liar loans. Americans and Hispanics were targeted because many had never been able to borrow before, which is why the loans were called subprime. Low monthly payments and interest rate as we promised. Here's where they tripled. The rest of this stuff, don't think a lawyer can read this. It protects us. Make sure we get your home when you can't pay us back. So why on earth do the banks lend money to people who can't pay it back? Because you got your money on the front end because there were no consequences to you as a mortgage broker for giving somebody a bad loan. So they did it because they could, because greed was in play, because there was no regulation. The brokers who made the loans sold them to Wall Street, where big banks like Goldman Sachs and Lehman Brothers packaged them into what were grandly called mortgage-backed securities. The ratings agencies then stamped them AAA or safe as houses, and the parcel was then passed to unsuspecting investors <coughs> around the world. The real villainy really was at the Wall Street level. These are some of the smartest people in the country. These are the people who've been making money for generations. They were bringing in product from cities like Cleveland and Detroit and packaging it and selling it to investors all over the world. They were too smart to not have known it. But the profits were too good, the bonuses were too huge, 
and you had no less than Alan Greenspan himself, the wizard at Wall Street who said nothing about this, so nobody was willing to speak out. What do you think of the Wall Street bankers who did this? They're, they're <laughs> It's a family show. <laughs> it's a family show. I can't tell you what I really think. I think they're awful human beings. And they don't care. And they got away with it. That's what you have to remember. They got away with it. So no one went to jail. No one went to jail. Any of those bonuses get returned? Almost a decade later, Cleveland is still paying the price. And incredibly, the banks are getting away with it again. As house prices fall, they are also abandoning these homes, leaving what are known as zombie mortgages to live on and haunt owners like Marty Canonis. Yeah, how's it going? Good. I'm Paul. Thank you. Marty bought this house 21 years ago and set about making it his home. That used to be a window. I put a sliding door in, stripping woodwork, put a new woodwork here. It's beautiful. You strip all the paint off this, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Marty refinanced his house to do it up. And although it was only worth just $50,000, the bank encouraged him to borrow 80 at 14%. Got it started. I put a lot of work into this house. Yeah, I can see. Chandelier. Chandelier. This year, he lost his job and fell behind with payments. The bank told him they were going to repossess his home. But then, unbeknown to him, it decided not to, leaving a zombie mortgage to haul him back. So what are you liable for to keep up the repair of this property? Correct. Even Everything. though you no longer live here? Correct. And even though you haven't paid the mortgage? Correct. And even though and I don't have a job. told you to move out and, and you don't have a job. I became unemployed and, um, multiple times. I've been laid off or lost my job six times in the past eight years. What sort of jobs? I was in banking, uh, oh. doing loan servicing. I've been in collections. Uh, Worked a couple restaurant jobs. I owned my own business for a while that, that closed. So what are you going to do? My plan was just to walk away. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can't walk away from the courts. So I was actually planning on moving down to Florida. Um, and that's being postponed due to court. Calling the case of Martin Quinones, the property of 1289, West 90. Mr. Stinger, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Quinones, uh, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. It looks as though uh, the city has filed a first-degree misdemeanor. Marty is required by Cleveland's building code to keep his house in good repair, and it's the housing court's job to see that he does. I don't know if you're arranging... But Judge Raymond Pianca isn't just interested in that. He also wants to fix that zombie mortgage by getting the bank into court as well. Um, there had been a discussion to subpoena the bank who has not released the lien nor taken the foreclosure through, is that right? It's only there for foreclosing. Uh -huh. And then they said, well, we didn't actually file the foreclosure. We weren't going to sell the property. They said, Let's see what we can do to make the best of a bad situation and move this property to a beneficial owner. Um, and you could even subpoena the bank. What bank is it? Marty doesn't know the answer. The bank he borrowed from on sold the loan to someone else. But whoever it turns out to be, zombie mortgage cases like this are one of the housing court's biggest problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. We've uh, regularly seen court owners who thought they lost the property. They may have filed bankruptcy, and their attorney told them, well, you now have a fresh start. You can go on with your life. But the mortgage company has to pick that mortgage up uh, and foreclose on it. Well, they don't. They don't want that property. So they will just walk away from the mortgage. It sounds like a good awful mess. Well, I think it is a mess. And um, I guess if we had the view from the balcony, uh, we'd say it's a mess. But we just view things address <laughs> by address. And that's how we're able to get along. Housing court is usually able to make the bank take the property or give it up to the county land bank. And the land bank can then find someone to live in the house and repair it, or more likely, knock it down. But 
between them, Cleveland City and Cuyahoga County have demolished 11,000 houses since 2007, and 10,000 more are in their sights if they can find the money. I always find it uh, somewhat frightening, honestly. When I'm in front of one of these, they scare me. It just... People lived in that house for, what, 60, 70, 80 years, and in 15 minutes, it's gone.